Hello, it's Francis from PlayerEssence.com, and we're bringing you today's Player Essence Cross Nintendo directly to you. So over the past couple months, a lot of people have complained about Nintendo's lack of third-party support, especially from Western developers. But if you take a closer look at things, they might not be as bad as they might seem. So without further ado, please take a look at this. All right, and I'm back here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that intro, and hopefully you guys see that although Nintendo's third-party support is lacking from some of, some of the major retailers, um, there's still a lot of good stuff coming from third parties down the pipeline, especially from the indie developers. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and let's get right into the um, best articles from PlayerEssence.com as far as original content goes. So we have Pikmin 3's impact on Wii U sales. Now I did a write-up as far as just how many um, systems Pikmin 3 has sold or just how well the Wii U sales have done in Japan on um, after Pikmin 3's release. So go ahead and check that out. It'll be in the description below. You'll be able to go over to PlayerEssence.com and see what I said about that. Has Pikmin 3 become a system seller? Well, you're going to have to check out the article to find out. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to Ricard Giuliani, the fantastic writer that I have on my side. Ricard Giuliani, he has written another great review for Cloudberry Kingdom, and you know, it's a fantastic review. Is it the hardest platformer on the Wii U? You're going to have to read his review to find out. All right, so next we're going to move right into the biggest news. So that was the Nintendo Direct by Satoru Iwata that Nintendo had, and the wonderful 101 Nintendo Direct by Hideki Kamiya. So we're going to talk about the Nintendo's Nintendo Direct first. So the highlights of this were the Animal Crossing Plaza on the eShop. You can go and download this for free right now. And the coolest thing about this is if you're really big into Animal Crossing, it just gives you another link between the 3DS and the Wii U, which Nintendo has been desperately trying to catch up on, which they definitely need to catch up on, is getting that link between the two systems and making them connect and interact and having that transparency like Sony has between the PS Vita and the PS3, and, and then later the PS4 and the PS Vita. So 
Um, you can download the Animal Crossing um, Plaza. It's basically like the War War Plaza that you see uh, as soon as you boot up the Wii U system. But it's with Animal Crossing, and you can check out all of your favorite animals and your townspeople. You can post messages to Miiverse. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. If you're a big Animal Crossing fan, this is definitely uh, for you. Um, it's smart by Nintendo too, because Animal Crossing is becoming as big as as some of their other franchises. It's becoming as big as maybe even Mario. I mean, honestly, the sales are definitely there. If you count physical plus digital, the sales are there for Animal Crossing. It is a big, portable franchise. So, I mean, if Nintendo needs to take it to the next step, they need to make sure people are thinking about Animal Crossing all the time, as if it was an MMO without being an MMO. So that's good that they did this. I think it's smart for them to increase sales and people who maybe who have a Wii U and don't have a 3DS, maybe see that and say, hey, this is something that I can purchase. So I think it's a good idea on Nintendo's part. Next, we're gonna move on to Pokemon Rumble U. And that launches August 29th on the eShop for Europe and for America. Um, don't quote me on the European release date, but I know for America, it's August 29th and um, you can pick up these GameStop figurines, so like all the figurines that you've seen, uh, there would be, I think there's 12, I'm not exactly sure. There's 12 of them, you get like a figurine from GameStop only that's an exclusive, you put it on the Wii U gamepad, and it'll basically be able to send that Pokemon in there. But you don't need to collect the figurines to have a lot of fun and to uh, collect everything. You can, you can unlock all that stuff in the game. Um, there's one other note too about this game is that the figurines, those are not region locked. So you can import the figurines from Japan because Japan has a ton of them. So you can import those figurines from Japan and use them on your Wii U here in America or if you live in uh, Europe or wherever you live in the world. You don't have to just get them from GameStop. You can buy them from Japan too. All right, next we're gonna move on to Rayman Legends. They did show it off at the Nintendo's uh, Direct and it looks pretty cool, of course. It looks good as always. Um, the delay uh, was unfortunate, but at the same time, they did add some Mario and Luigi costumes that you can use. So for Rayman and his buddies, so that's really cool. Um, like cosplay, you like Mario and Luigi, bam, you can have the costumes, and they look nice and slick. So I do like that they added that to the Wii U version of the game. All right, next there's also some information on Sonic Lost World and specifically the connectivity between the 3DS and the Wii U version. So what's really cool about this is that um, on the 3DS version, you can actually customize and build uh, different robots. And those robots can be sent over to the Wii U version, and from there, a second player can pick up and play as those robots, and hit enemies, collect rings, help Sonic out in his game. So that's a really cool way to do some co-op in there, a really cool way to get some interact uh, interactivity, like I said, that Nintendo's been trying to do with their 3DS and Wii U, so that's good. So now for me, I definitely I think that's gonna be um, a pickup for me, Sonic Lost was on the 3DS, just so I can have that interconnectivity between my Wii U version of the game. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that was basically the highlights of that. If you want to know a full recap of the Nintendo Direct, make sure you check the description below and you'll be able to go over there. There's more 3DS news. There's some Professor Layton games that were announced uh, for the Western audience, which will be coming out in 2014, the crossover with Phoenix Wright. So uh, if you want to see all that and the rest of the 3DS news and virtual console news, go ahead and head over to playeressence.com in the description below. All right, next we're going to move on to the biggest news for me is the wonderful 101 at Nintendo Direct. That was huge news, it was very good. There is a demo on the wonderful 101 that's up right now that you can download in all regions. And you know, it's this game is fantastic. It is fantastic. It, to me, it's a system seller. I know maybe that won't be for lots of other people, but to me, if you don't have a Wii U, and you like action games, I think if you like action games, if you like Bayonetta, if you like Devil May Cry, buy a Wii U, buy the Wonderful 101, you will not be disappointed. It is fantastic. It is just a fantastic game. I keep on saying that, but it really is. And I'll go ahead and get into why it's such a good game. Um, the surprises that they announced at the Nintendo Direct. Now, Hideki Kamiya was out there in his suit and tie. Uh, looked kind of uncomfortable, but probably this is his first time doing something like that. So I can give him a break there. But I think he did a fantastic job explaining the game and why the game is so good. So they went through a couple things. And what I love, what I absolutely love about this game is the fact that it has so much personality. The different characters in there. They showed off uh, Wonder Black, they showed off the Wonder Yellow, they showed off Wonder White. And so, I mean, they showed off all the different characters and how they interact between each other. Wonder Blue and Wonder Red having a little conflict between each other. There are so many cool things about just the characters. Before we even get into the gameplay, just about the characters, it has a certain um, flavor to it. It has a certain 
um, experience that you really you don't see a lot. A lot of these games that come out today, they don't they they take themselves way too seriously. Everything is military. Everything is Jenkins. Get over here! Oh, it's always about shooting, and it's always about just being like you know uh, covert ops, and everything is so serious. But this game. It's like they have those aspects of those other games, but it's it's put together by the writing and by the voice acting so well that you don't see Nintendo games as far as fully voice acted. You know what I'm saying? Fully voice acted has some really good voice actors that have done work on Naruto and other uh, different IPs and intellectual properties. So, I mean, it's just fantastic how they interacted with the characters, how the characters interact with each other, the jokes that are going on between them, and just basically the characters, how they're... Um, Wonder Yellow, he's like really shy, he's from Russia, you know, so just things like that. And when I was playing the demo, there was just so many other little things here and there that really just made me smile when I was playing the game. Um, as far as Nintendo Direct goes, when Hideki Kamiya talked about the combat in the game, a lot of depth. Now, it might not have the same depth as like, let's say, button combinations with like a game like Bayonetta, but what it does have is that there's a lot of skills in there. And then combine that with the different transformations that you have, you can create your own custom combo similar to Bayonetta as far as dodge offsetting. But basically what they do is they replace that dodge offsetting basically with different um, transformations and shapes. So that basically turns from, you know, holding one combo and branching into something completely different with a different shape, like as far as with a different color. So Wonder, Wonder Pink's whip or with uh, Wonder Green's gun. I mean, one of the coolest things that I remember doing in the comp uh, or in the game when I was playing was I basically did the climb attack. So that's basically where you just do a standard attack with all of your uh, heroes. And as soon as they all climb up on there and stun the enemy, you can press the B button to jump and hit it quick with an A button. And that will get you to hit them up into the air with basically any um, of the different uh, heroes. And then once you do that, you can transform that into a gun and shoot them. You can transform into the sword if you hit them with Wonder Red. Um, they definitely have the stinger. The stinger is back from uh, Devil May Cry where you basically just lunge at an enemy with your sword or even with the, the fist, Wonder Red. So there's just so much depth and complexity to the game. It really had me saying like, wow, this is the Wii U's like, first like breakout like action game. Now, Pikmin 3 just came out. Uh, just a little bit ago so that was fantastic love pikmin 3 i, I like the the real-time strategy elements and things like that so but wonderful 101 action games everybody who knows me knows that action games like bayonetta and devil may cry and uh beautiful joe in the going back a little bit those are my favorite types of games you know action games and rpgs and this game just really it really scratches that itch because not only that but when you play the demo you saw when you're playing how in-depth this game is. It wasn't just from the skills, but you saw, if you went into the menu, you can see how you can select different heroes. Each hero has their own status bar as far as intelligence, speed, uh, leadership, things like that. Each one, and you can select any hero to do different powers. Just wonder why they have the main ones, they have their main powers, but you can select different heroes to um, customize. And then not only that, can you select different heroes, but you actually have like this, your wonder badge. And on your wonder badge, you can actually put power-ups and upgrades on your wonder badge. And, you know, in conjunction with the different skills you learn, you have the wonder badge, the different heroes. This game has a ton of depth. You collect the O parts, and that basically um, goes into your upgrading system to where you can spend at the Wonder Mart, like Kamiya discussed. It, there is so many different aspects to this game. It is mind-boggling. It's definitely more than Bayonetta. Um, when Hideki Kamiya said in an interview earlier that they, they took them more manpower to make this game, and this game has a sheer amount of, as far as content goes, more than Bayonetta, I do not disagree with him. I mean, this game just has a ton of stuff to do in it, and it is long from what we've heard. You know, Kamiya is saying it's going to be around the 20 hour mark, and that's just the first playthrough, you know. And, you know, in any game that Hideki Kamiya makes, it doesn't, the game doesn't really start to the second playthrough. That's when you've got the hang of things. That's when you know, okay, I need to, I need to do this. I haven't, you know, I need to go back and get all of these things. And what, what, another one of the cool things about this game as far as replay value, as far as playability goes, you earn different um, medals for your completion time, if you take any damage, speed, combos, just like Bayonetta um, does, and each segment is broken up into that. So you can replay those and try to get pure platinums. Uh, I was playing the demo, and on the first ones I didn't get any pure platinums, but then I was I replayed the demo again and again and again, and I started um, getting the hang of things and getting pure platinums, started increasing my combo meters and stuff like that. So 
it is just amazing how much content this game has. And I know a lot of people have said that um, this game should have been out earlier. I know a lot of there's even people in the media, many media members said this should have been out earlier. But you have to realize if you want to make a game with this amount of content, you know, that'd be hard to get this game out of launch. I looked at Pikmin 3 and I looked at um, The Wonderful 101 and you can clearly tell that they added more than they even wanted to. I think the projects got bigger than they thought and they knew that if they delayed it, it'd be a good product. And I think that delaying these were definitely good. It was definitely good for the Wii U because if you see all the stuff that they added, it's definitely worth it, especially I'm playing through Pikmin 3 and I look at all the different stuff that they've added to the game. I mean, from the, I've looked at the other Pikmin games and I've seen this one, I'm like, man, they this is packed full of content, you know? And same thing with the Wonderful 101, it is just, you can play Pikmin 3 and the Wonderful 101 for, I'll probably be playing those games for the rest of the year. I mean, it's really that amazing. I mean, I played Bayonetta for a, more than a year, I played Bayonetta, and I played Beautiful Joe for at least seven months. I was replaying Beautiful Joe, playing that game over and over, the first and second one. I would play those games all the time, and Kamiya talked about that a little bit in his, um, in one of the interviews that he did. He said that, you know, he wants to create a game that you can play forever, for a lifetime, and he said that he still played, there's certain action games that he still plays to this day, and you know what, and I think that's why the delay got, they, they delayed it, just because they needed to make sure that it had enough in there to sell the Wii U for a long time, you know, because a lot of times like you'll get these games um, and you you play them for just a little bit, you know, you just play them like, you play through the single player campaign, you're like, okay, yeah, that was great, not a lot of replayability, uh, not a lot of stuff to do after that, and um, that's how a lot of third parties treat the Wii U, and that's how a lot of third parties have done to the Wii U, it's like you play through the game one time and it's like, okay, great, or it's like a port, and you're like, oh, well, it's not very fun, there's not really much to do after that. But they really, Kamiya and Nintendo, they really worked on this game to make sure that it really had everything you needed. And really, it, it does. I mean, I, I played through the, the story mode and I was like, wow, this is a lot. And then what I didn't notice is that the mission mode, I was like, oh, well, let me click on the mission mode. And like, oh, well, you can play that too. And they just showed off some the one easy one, um, you know, the easy rank mission. And that was fun. I mean, your your uh, battery meter doesn't go down, and you can just basically you can spam your uh, your wonder dodging, your wonder spring. You can spam all of your wonder powers all you want. You just gotta make sure you dodge and you play strategically. But it, it's fantastic. I can't wait to go through that wonder missions mode. Maybe go through with a friend. Um, just so much content. Like I can't. I mean, this is just a demo. I can see all the content. I can't wait to get my hands on the actual game. Which, if anybody didn't know, September fifteenth here in America. August 23rd in Europe um, and a lot of people have basically talked about how that was annoying but you have to remember after the whole fiasco with Nintendo and people not knowing that it was a new system and them saying the media like Nintendo didn't tell us it was a new system Nintendo didn't tell us we didn't know we just thought it was an add-on to the Wii U Nintendo's gonna make damn sure that everybody knows exactly when something is coming out or exactly what something is I mean so I can't fault them for saying that over and over because they want everybody to know it's coming out at this time, so maybe it was a little overkill, but hey, I didn't have a problem with it at all, but I can see why some people might have gotten annoyed with it. Um, going into the Wonderful 101 a little bit more before we wrap this whole thing up, this is how third parties, like if you're a third party company and you're making a game for a Nintendo system, look at what Platinum Games did. This is the style of game that Nintendo fans want. This is the type of game that you can sell on any to any age, any person, anybody. This is the type of game that you can do that. And if third parties, they, if they want to be successful, these are the type of games they need to bring out. And as you saw, as far as kind of shifting gears over to the third party support, and as far as me uh, talking about third party support and being upset on last week's episode, Nintendo has more than enough third party support in my opinion. If the big guys don't want to put Metal Gear, if the big guys don't want to put, if you don't want to put Madden, if you don't want to put your games on there, that's fine. Nintendo planned for this, and it was called the Digital Deluxe Program. All of those games that were at the pre-roll, those are all good games. All of those indie games, buy those. And when you buy those indie games, if you have the Wii U Deluxe set, you get points. And those points add up, you get gift cards, or you get eShop gift cards. And what you can do with that, you can use those to buy your first party games. You can use those to buy your big first party games. You know what I'm saying? You can use those to buy more indie games. And that's the third party support that we need. That's the third party support that I'm fine with. Like I said, I would love to have all of these big games on the Wii U. But if that if, if the if those companies don't want our money, 
Let's spend it on companies who do want our money and who are willing to put games that on there. And let's spend less. Think about it. Indie games are cheaper and you can have just as much fun. I was looking at some of the games, um, the puzzle game that was in there and the uh, the little do game and some of the other games that are coming to the Wii U eShop, the indie games look fantastic. That have There's some RTS games in there as well. Buy those games. Get points. Use those points to buy more games. Get those for free. You don't get anything when you go buy, uh, I, if, let's just say Battlefield was to come to the Wii U. You don't get anything unless, I mean, I don't think EA would even put it digitally because they didn't put any of the other games digitally. Um, you don't get anything from that. Purchase the indie developers that are passionate about their projects, that care, that put replay value, that put stuff into their games and actually care about the Nintendo fan base. Go buy their games. They deserve our money a lot more than Konami, than EA, than uh, Bethesda, than those companies that are that just basically bash the Wii U audience and bash the console all the time, you know? Who gives a crap about them? There's plenty of third-party games outside of Nintendo's first-party stuff, and the games that they purchased themselves as far as third-party support goes with Platinum. You know, there are plenty of games to play. All of those indie games are all coming this year or early next year. The Wonderful 101, Platinum Games, third-party. Sonic Lost Worlds, another big game. Buy these indie games, then use those points that you uh, acquired to purchase The Wonderful 101 digitally or purchase Sonic Lost Worlds. Hell, even there's Watch Dogs. I mean, that's probably going to be digital. You can use it to buy that or Splinter Cell. Look, we're not, Nintendo fans aren't getting everything. We're used to that. But at the same time, don't turn a blind eye. You know what I'm saying? Don't turn a blind eye to what's actually coming out. Because there's plenty of stuff. And the, the trolls and the media, they're using the bigger games to overshadow these other developers. And it's sad. And it's sad to me because these other developers are busting their butt. You know, you've got guys like these indie developers that are busting their butt, bringing all of these games over to Wii U, all these Kickstarter games that are coming over to Wii U. They're busting it, and it's getting overshadowed by these media members and trolls who want to say, nah, 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 you're not getting this game. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad, and I'm tired, like I said, I'm tired of port begging. I'm tired of giving these companies attention when these companies over here, these little companies, are bringing quality content to the Wii U, and we're not paying attention to it because we have trolls pointing in our face saying you're not getting something. If I want that, I'll just go buy a PS4 to get it. I already have a PS3 and 360, and everybody should be saying the same thing. If you want that game, just get that system and buy that game. But don't ignore what's, what else is going on you know, on the Wii U. Don't ignore these other developers that are busting it and putting these games on the Wii U, because these games need attention too. And that's why I said I'm done port begging. I'm going to be highlighting on this channel what the Wii U is getting, what we're going to be playing. And all of these games that I talked about you know, all of these games that are uh, the indie developers, those guys need attention, and that's where the attention is going to be going to. Not on what's not coming, but what is coming. So that's basically my little rant on um, on third-party developers. If you want your stuff over to Wii U, we'll purchase it. If you don't, that's fine. Look at all these cool indie games. So my message to everybody watching this and the people who like Nintendo's games, first of all, ignore the trolls. Ignore the stupid media members. Um, a lot of people ignore what they say. Ignore them and purchase these cool indie games, all these stuff that's coming to the Wii U, get those points and use it to buy some of the bigger games or use it to buy more indie games. Because Nintendo is racking up. And like I said, don't be discouraged because it's an indie game. Don't think it's not gonna be good, trust me. A lot of these games are fantastic. Look at Bit Trip Runner too. That game is awesome. I put like 50 hours into that game. It's better than ev mostly every single major third party game that I've played on other systems, plain and simple. I'll pick Bit Trip Runner 2 over Battlefield 4 any day, you know, so, and I would pick a lot of these other indie games that are coming to the Wii U, a lot of these cool RPGs, a lot of these cool platforming, a lot of these cool puzzle games, I'll pick them over a lot of the big games any day, just because it's quick, fun, easy action, you know what I'm saying, the developers are, um, are passionate about their projects and they're passionate about what they're doing and they want to sell, they want their product to sell to the Nintendo fan base. so, um, I have no time for people who demean us and people who don't respect. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and beg for something from a company that doesn't want money. If you don't want it, then that's fine. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, there's been a lot of talk and there's been a lot of um, a lot of banter going back between trolls and media members on the Wii U bashing them. But don't let it get you down. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't let it get you down because there's plenty of content. If not, uh, let's all focus on all these cool indie games and the big major titles that are coming to the Nintendo systems, you know? So 
that's my take. And I pretty much wrapped it up here. I think that's all for the, this episode of Player Essence Cross Nintendo. Let me know what you guys think. Um, definitely, if, do you guys think that we should be focusing on the indie games? Do you guys think that this whole third-party support thing is maybe a little overblown, especially with all the games that are coming over to the Wii U as far as indie developers go? Um, I think it is, but let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Also, make sure you check out PlayerEssence.com for all of your news, reviews, trailers, tips and tricks. I've, I've already put up a bunch of different articles today, and I should have more coming up uh, later as well. Make sure you check out our Player Essence uh, Facebook page in the description below. If you like us on Facebook, you get all of our exclusive content sent straight to your PC, phone, or tablet. It's uh, actually really, really cool. A lot, of, a lot of people have been going on there, a lot of good interaction between Facebook and Player Essence, so please continue to do that, and I thank everybody who has jumped on there and given us a like on Facebook. All right, so that basically wraps it up here. Once again, I am Theus Francis, and I brought this episode of Player Essence Cross Nintendo directly to you, and we will see you guys on PlayerEssence.com. Peace.